No. Yes. We are I'm live. Not okay. Not Wait. And, and, that's okay. We, we, we're talking and all this stuff would go on. There's we're nothing on. Wow. There's we're nothing just, showing on YouTube like though. Not, not yet because it takes so. a few before it actually yeah. comes through. There we okay. see it. Oh, there we are. Yay! Boom. Thank you, Sean. Uh, <laughs> as you all know, the name is the muck, and that's the way we roll. Uh, uh, just for your all enjoyment, you get to find out what happened. What What happened is we're getting ready to go live. And then uh, the Zoom link so that we had crashed, and it says your <laughs> your uh, you your know, time is up. A lot of yeah, bugs and stuff. Stuff. <laughs> right yeah. as we were getting ready to go live, and uh, and then uh, and we were gone. Now, so we'll our guest is uh, finding is his way back uh, to us too, and uh, but that's okay. We can yammer because uh, we're that kind of people. We can roll with just about anything. We're interesting, by golly. Yeah, make sure you have the correct night and amazing. There's like no, no. I'm sorry. We are a muck. We're not a no. So we're amazingly a muck. It, it, it's amazing. Yeah. It, when it has more people it, it, and a picture. Yeah, well, you know, if there's one thing we're consistent in. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Always right. so, something new. No, it's so funny time. because it just it it right yeah, it when it happens, <laughs> right when we we're gonna go live. Was like all, we all get on the chat like, oh no! <laughs> I know we all got kicked out. We're like, no. <laughs> yeah, and we got down to like we did it right this time, and we got yeah, down to one and a boost. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right okay. we're all right we're good we're good we're good life is good i'm good you're good we're good and i'm wearing pants so <laughs> well hey. what is the well, special occasion <laughs> you know it got up into the 70s to get today and that, you uh -huh. know I, I thought about going pantsless uh, <laughs> but it just i mean it is what it is oh, it's a family show in. right <laughs> anyhow uh not that i I never, I never said I'm naked. I just don't always wear pants. Sometimes I wear shorts. Uh, oh, gotcha. See, see, see. Words are, words are important. <laughs> they are important, aren't they? <laughs> All right. So I don't know about you guys. I think Tom is trying to come back. He's, he's, he's struggling. Hold up. Come back, um, Tom. Tom. In there, I see Enzo Tom, are you, and Ginger. Are you with us tonight, Creeps Tom? Is with us. Yay! Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and CB Blaze, thanks for joining. Tom, me. in case everybody wants to know, Tom is a magician. He has disappeared. <laughs> he just sent a. Did you see that message? Yeah, he just sent it. Said I'm not on. <laughs> what do I do? Oh, yeah, spring uh, is around the corner. That's right. We're good. It's Life is good. That time of year where you don't know whether to wear a hoodie or just wear a hoodie and wear layers. That's what I did today. I, I, wore, I wore my hoodie to work and I dragged it behind me leaving work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> kind of reminded me of, as a I'll kid. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. I'll be back. It's a, it, man, it's a Terminator. No, <laughs> uh, no, I was raised in California. I'm sorry. I apologize to all those people in the Amuck area. But uh, as uh, most of my school years were in California. I, uh, but, uh, but at this time of year in California, it's ice cold when you go to school and it's a hundred and some odd degrees when you, <laughs> yeah, about by about 11 o'clock and uh yeah we weren't allowed to have lockers uh in california so really? so yeah so i had to drag this coat behind me i hated wearing coats because i knew i'd end up dragging it up behind me all the time it was terrible I hated oh my it. goodness yeah that's a bummer <laughs> so how's everybody so, doing tonight hopefully everyone's doing good it and so it was like spring is link. just around uh, the corner. Send it through Messenger. Uh, sounds like you're busy trying to call somebody. Thanks. He, he's talking to us, <laughs> but talking to him. I'm so excited. I hope Tom can get on quickly. We got to talk to him a little bit backstage, and he is a very cool dude. So this will be a fun show once we get it. Once get we get there. Stuff together. Yep. <laughs> once we get it together. <laughs> okay. No problem. We'll, we'll figure this out. Is if we get him back in on here, we could talk about all kinds of things. But we can talk about stuff. What do we got? What do we got going on? We got uh, we got. I know we have uh, uh, some Arkansas things. The first next big thing to come in. That's in what's it? July, right? Though we don't have anything happen before that, do we? That you know of? Not that I know off the top of my head. That's I know. Uh, I think is it July sixth? Enzo is Janice. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I, I need to send him a message to get him on the day. on the show before that, and uh, talk about that. Just because it's an Arkansas thing, I I do know who I got. My next guest that I'm bringing on is a uh, paranormal investigator slash filmmaker, uh, and it, it'll be uh, good to hear him. 
because he's gone through uh, some personal struggles in his life because he went on vacation to Las Vegas and had a stroke while he was there. Oh, no, that's and terrible. so now he's getting back to being able to function, but it's been a hard road. So I get to talk about his life and the paranormal and how that's affected all that and uh, how it's affected him uh, in his uh, in his filmmaking. So but when we get closer to that, we'll talk about that. So, oh, wait a minute. Come in. No. What do he you think? Was, he was no. on his way in, but then he disappeared. He disappeared again. See, you said he was a magician. Yeah. The <laughs> guest that we had last time, Creeps, out of yeah. Kansas City, oh. uh, they put on here, doesn't everyone boo when we talk about states outside of a muck? Isn't that Adrian's rule? And Adrian's <laughs> talking about being from California. So, yeah. Boo. <laughs> yeah. I talk about them foreign countries all the time, and I visit them all, too. Well, yeah, that's a, that was way back then. But see, I've lived half my <laughs> life now here in Arkansas. Uh, I'm lived sorry. Here, I lived here more than any okay, place Tom. else I've lived in my entire life. So it, uh, so I, I, I'm good. And and like a lot of the weirdos from California that move here, I don't miss California. Not one bit. Not one minute of the day. Because Although the weather's good and I got great food. There's a lot of stuff to do, but the day-to-day -day life, no, I wouldn't trade this for the for the awesome. world. I, lo I love it here. So, so Tom, did you um, make turn, it? Turn on your uh, camera, please. Um. Oh, we hear him. We do. Um, That's great. We have we have sound. Yeah, I'm not sure how. Honestly, Ken. Uh, Hang on, I'm looking. Way. I'm looking. It's I like a real-time EVP. There you go. Yay. Yeah, for someone who's not user friendly, hey, that's not bad. All yeah. right, everybody, welcome to a knock. Hey. <laughs> and with no further returned. ado, we'll hand it over to Ken. Hey, welcome to Missouri, the Mo part of the Amok. And uh, <laughs> uh, I know last week I promised that we would have somebody else on. Something happened. We're gonna, she's gonna come on the show later on this year, but. I talked to Tom last night, and why do I have messages on my screen? Hang on. <laughs> wait, wait, no, we can't okay, hang on. I'm back. <clears throat> I'm back again. There anyway, Tom has graciously agreed to talk to us tonight. Tom is amazing. He's a paranormal enthusiast. He um, he deals with spirits, cryptids, um, UFOs. He works with crystals. Uh, he even makes. Um, I think you call them um, uh, mobiles. Is that right? Mobiles? Suncatcher mobiles. Yeah. Suncatcher cool. mobile, mobiles. And uh, and we have investigated, actually, we've investigated together a couple times mm -hmm. uh, in the foreign countries we keep talking about. <laughs> but, but Tom has spent a lot of time in the state of Missouri and investigating a few places here and a few places that I never even knew about. So I'm excited to talk to Tom tonight, and I think uh, hopefully the world is going to be excited as well, because he's got some great stories. So welcome, Tom. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. It's my pleasure to be here. So where do you want to start? I've been uh, to two locations. I've been to Shoal, Can uh, Shoal Creek in yeah. um, Kansas City, mm -hmm. and I've been to Ray County Museum. We've been and there. Both of them. I've, I had amazing experiences. It was just, it was mind boggling in a couple of them. Shoal Creek especially, because those buildings there were all brought in from different parts of the South. So with them, they brought their stories. And there were several little cabins and stuff. And we were on this tour with um, Paranormal Task Force. And the tour guide took us to a little two-story cabin by a creek. And he kept telling us about a little girl who's supposed to be there. Well, next thing I know, that little girl's tugging on my pants. And I look down and she's standing right there, but she's dripping wet. And somebody asked the tour guide, what had happened to her? How did she die? He said, well, we think she drowned. And I looked at her and I said, she did. And somebody said, well, how do you know? I said, well, she's standing right here with me and she's dripping wet. And she told me. 
And about that time, someone had a spirit box and across the spirit box came drowned. Oh. Well, wow. it kind of, you know. Corroboration is cool. awesome. That's awesome, and, yeah. And we're walking around and the place has got a big <laughs> mansion. Um, it was a wealthy family. They had a black lady who worked with them, um, who ran the household, ran the garden and such. And I had been done doing a lot of walking and I was kind of worn out. So I had to sit down at a bench and I kind of closed my eyes. The next thing I know, I'm looking out and this woman is there in her garden, pulling out vegetables, putting them in a basket and walking away and going into the house. So I poked Bill and I said, we got to go in there because this was the spirit of this black woman. Um, so we go in the house and we're walking around and there's a, um, a real person playing the harpsichord in one room. And then we walk through a little hall and there's two big family portraits. And one of them has a whole, whole family that lived in that house and kind of looked at it. So then we go into the parlor and I had to take a step back the one daughter was carrying a tea tray that had a tea service that my grandmother had walking around serving guests. Oh, wow. And we told the lady who was there in the house about this. And she said, well, if I show you the family, well, could you pick her out? And I said, yes, it was very, I mean, she was like, she was right there. And I went over and pointed to her and she goes, oh my, that's the one everyone says they see here. And she mm -hmm. has, I said, a tea tray that she carries around and she goes, yes, that was it. So I thought, oh, this is even better. You know, this was getting good. And there on the very edge of the property, they had an old church and it had been brought in from way south, had the big white steeple. But as I looked at it, I told Bill, I said, there's something wrong down there. He goes, what do you mean? I said, because it's totally encapsulated in black. It was just like it was in a black ball. And the closer we got to it, the more uneasy I felt. So we went in and they were telling us about some of the things that were happening. And all I could see were clan members walking back and forth in their white with the, it, it, I had to finally leave. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to get out. I said, Bill, I've got to get out of here. I just cannot take it. It was causing such anxiety and such horrible feelings. But it's been said that the, the Klan used that, that facility when it, before it was brought into Shoal Creek. Oh, and yeah. I said, I know, I said, but it, it even now it kind of gives me the, the willies a little bit because it, was, it wasn't anything I had ever experienced before. It was very dark and heavy and you could feel anger and such in them. In the, and it just, I, I just had to get out. I didn't well, go back. It, it would definitely be, I mean, because that's why they kind of gathered, right? Because of... Uh, anger so of course it would have that kind of negative emotion to it absolutely now i didn't know any of this going in i just knew something wasn't right and once yeah. i was in there and was sitting down i could actually start seeing it and then this tour guide started telling us about what was going on but i couldn't stay in there more than three or four minutes i had to find the thing mm. it just it, it was just too much but the whole grounds there are just amazing various buildings and um they've all got a history of their own that goes with it and they i think there's only one original building to that site but all the rest of them have been donated and were brought back in and put back together and made usable for the the well here in springfield we've got new salem and it's very similar to that only at new salem those homes and buildings are all original for there. Whereas this, they were all brought in. But it was very nicely done, it really was. At the time when you were there, um, could you tell or did you experience anything on the grounds itself? Uh, like uh, <clears throat> experience any energies or um, 
activity itself on the ground, like in between, like it maybe it leached out of the some of the buildings. Well, at the big mansion, they had their garden. Oh, and okay. I saw the spirit of this black woman out there picking her vegetables. Okay. And this was actually outside, and she turned, she she was, it had to be a residual because she didn't acknowledge Bill and I. She just was going about her business, turned and walked back into the house. Made, made me think that it was it, it was an original uh, or, or um, residual type of fact. Or well, maybe she wasn't paying attention to you because you're white. That easily could have been too. Yeah, she um, like, she you know, knew not to speak to woman right. unless she was spoke to, and and that oh, I hadn't thought about that, but that very easily could have been it. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I wasn't there, and, and I'm not woo woo at all, so I don't know what I'd pick up and what I wouldn't. But uh, but yeah, a woo woo is my my uh, my word for people who see things that I don't. So Robert in the word. chat, he said, if it was not part of the original land, that would cause the existing spirits anxiety too. Could oh, perhaps, I think it would. I, Good point. And it was on um, a creek. Mm -hmm. And just the other side of it was this magnificent golf course and these big fancy houses and then Kansas City. But mm -hmm. um, it, it was it was a very nice evening. It really was. CB Blaze in the chat said, Tom, any stories of our old home? Of what? Of their old home. It's CB Blaze is the name that asked. Um, oh, yeah, the CB Blaze. It, the people yeah. said that the uh, the Burt family. The Burt is oh, that oh the Burt family. Um, yeah. I saw the, the, the one home that was original to that spot was the big mansion. And it was a wealthy family. And they had the black woman slave or the housekeeper. I saw the daughter serving tea, and the daughter wasn't there, but she, I was able to point her out in the family portrait. And um, yeah, yeah, it was quite a quite an experience. And like I say, she was walking around serving tray, and it just kind of blew my mind because it was the tea set my grandmother brought from Scotland. It's amazing. Her. It, it just, it, it, <laughs> yeah. So, so that, you're seeing. You're seeing these things move around, and uh, has any of them uh, spoke to you? Any or do you just pick up on what's going on around you? N not there, but at Ray County Museum. So that's yes. place we went to. That's the place yes. we went to, right? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. kind of an interesting place. It was. It was so eclectic. There was just a little bit of everything, and everything. You see them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, not the kind of museums I'd have been in, let's put it yeah, like that. Yeah. And I and and just everything had a little bit of energy to it and a little bit of story. And I did the initial walkthrough with the with the guest host and everybody. And and I just kind of felt the need to kind of go off by myself. So I did. And one of the rooms we hadn't been in that I was kind of pulled to was full of well, it was for the town that it was in. It had some of their old football uniforms and cheerleader outfits. And just, it was high school. And I was standing there and I could hear this little girl and she was crying. And, and I looked over and I could see her standing there and she was all sad and she had pom-poms. I said, sweetheart, what's wrong? And she came over and she goes, I wasn't able to grow up to be a cheerleader. I wanted to oh. be a cheerleader so bad. And with that, I sat down on the floor and her and I just talked and she did some cheers for me and everything. And oh, I was there about 10, 15 minutes and and I could just see this. It was the room was totally different what I was seeing. And she would do her cheers. She had a little outfit on. And about that time, the tour guide with the rest of the group came in and she said, now, oh, you can stand up if you mind, you know. So I stood up and everything. I was had gotten real comfortable. And she said, and here we have a little girl. I said, yes. And she is a sweetheart. And she wasn't able to be a cheerleader. She died before she could do that. And I said, and she is so sad sometimes. And they're all looking at me going, yeah. I said, we've been in here talking. And it was just, 
I could just feel the excitement and the energy, not so much from the real people, but the little girl got excited. It, it just, it, it was neat, <laughs> quite That's an experience. Really yeah, Ray County is a is an interesting place. There's a there's a lot of stuff there, and a lot of as you said, a lot of different, you know, just mm -hmm. different thing. I think they must have about fifty or more rooms, and every one of them is a different theme. I know I had uh, got drawn into the World War II room, which I was telling you about last night, and um, everything was. I was getting some responses through the spirit box. And then all of a sudden I said something and I don't know exactly what I said. I don't remember, but I was talking about uh, Pearl Harbor and absolutely everything shut down. And I stayed there for about 30 more minutes thinking, okay, I'll apologize and see what's going on. Nothing. I got nothing from that room the rest of the night. Wow. So, and then we went upstairs that one hallway that a lot of people, the dresses, I think it was. Yes. I got to that threshold and I was not allowed to cross the threshold into that, into that hallway. It was, it was like a force field. I could that not cross it. Connected but, to the uniforms downstairs. Is that, is that where it was? Okay. That's what happened. Whatever transpired it involved both some of the dresses and the uniforms and okay. and because whatever action was done that shut it down they said no that's all i'm picking up okay but, but yeah yeah make contact it, it, with the bear but was it a bear what would they say it was supposed to be out there? Oh, the yeah, the uh, <laughs> I think it was a bear, like a circus it, bear or something. There was a circus oh, yeah. bear that died. That yeah. got buried yeah. outside. Yeah, yeah. But when I took a picture of that, the angle I took it, it was so weird. They had just cut the grass, I think, that morning or something. It was still wet <laughs> and damp. And when I looked at the picture you could almost see the outline of this giant bear where the <laughs> indent did. was. Yeah. And I'm like, really cool picture. And I'm like, okay, coinkadink possibly, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I just thought it was, I just thought it was pretty awesome. I, th I think that's the artist suggestion there. <laughs> well, it could have been, I think it was the shadow play <laughs> of the artist, <laughs> but it did look like a giant bear laying there. I'm like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> We have Terry Mosby in the chat, and she said uh, she just loves Thomas and has several of his chimes. Chimes? What is that? Chime in on that. What is that? What are you talking about? Tell us about your chimes. Well, I make sun catchers, and I use a lot of crystals, and we have some property that have had Sasquatch sightings at. So when I get ready to put my sun catchers together, I will go out there and find a branch lying on the ground usually and pick it up and use that for the sun catchers. Not so much that Sasquatch has touched it, but there is that chance. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, added with the, the, the crystals and I will use things like rose quartz, tourmaline. Uh, I'll use some turquoise, depending on what I'm trying to uh, get. But the faceted crystals I use are always preciosa. Those are one of the only genuine, true Czech crystals still made. When these factories have been in existence, and there's only a couple of them, since about the 1300s, when communism took over, they came in and shut them all down but two. And with a preciosa crystal, they are now considered the most metaphysical crystal being produced. Oh. And you can get a package of them. And they were, your Swarovski crystal will be all identical. Colors will be specific. Whereas your Preciosa, it may be off just a bit. Color may be just slight difference a little bit. But that's because they're handmade. Mm -hmm. And that just gives it that little bit more energy. So I always use those in my creations. And 
then I get online and find well, chandelier parts, the big fancy in pieces of chandeliers. And that's yeah. what I will finish it off. Those will catch the light. They will bounce your prisms, um, bring in energies that combined with the stones that I've been using. Um, I've, I've made some pretty cool pieces, I must say. So now I'm probably going to have to get one because I got a good place for it right there. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, they are they are nice, and and I'm making one now for a friend, and she didn't want any stones; she just wanted crystals. So this is a little bit different. It'll be interesting. Yeah, cool. but it's just that that the handmade with the thought you have you you obviously put a thought behind everything. That's kind of that's cool. I do, yeah. and it, if a doesn't feel right i take it apart and redo it mm -hmm. it's got to feel right with me before i will release it to wherever it's going to the hot cool so tom what do you what do you think when you're creating these things what do you try to get your your artistic piece to resonate what are if, you trying to i'm making it for someone in particular i will sit in my back room back here. And I will have all my work spread out in front of me on a little table. And I'm just think of that person and think of the times we've spent together, things we've done. And I'll just kind of have an idea what I want. And I'll just kind of start putting it together. I'll lay it out in front of me. Um, they all have at least three or five stringers and I'll lay, lay them out just to see how they look see how long it's going to be, um, just to get a feel for it. And then I just, when I'm working on it, I have to be in the appropriate frame of mind. I can't be, it's, I've got to be happy. I've got to be peaceful. The music's got to be playing. Not so the music. <laughs> Me too. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 it puts me in a mood. Mm -hmm. And the mood's not the right word, but it gets my mind set. There are certain properties you try to put into them or have the stones represent? Exactly. I, I, I follow some lines of feng shui with the three, the five, the nines. Um, more in how it feels when I'm doing it than anything else. Because okay. I've had some really unusual combinations that have actually turned out pretty cool. Then I've had what I thought was going to be just beautiful combinations. Oh, don't work. And, <laughs> yeah, and and, and and each each crystal and each stone has got its own uh, what they represent, what kind of they're supposed to channel energy, oh, they're supposed to channel, and all that stuff. That's more of my daughter's forte because I like hanging a rock. Hey, this is pretty. She's like, oh, this is a blah blah blah, and me yada yada yada. I'm like, oh yeah, I just thought it was pretty. Well, and, and that's what I try to do. When I get finished, I will have a write-up of what I've created, what I've used, what each one of the actual hard crystals represent, what their energies are. Um, then I'll throw a little something else in at the bottom, something goofy or something. But it, it, it's always specifically addressed to that individual or if I'm going to be selling them, um, I will have a big price tag on it was on the back of handwritten description of what it is. So that's going to lead me to another question. I know that's a Ken show, but I'm going to ask oh. anyway. Uh, now, you know, you're talking about crystals and putting them in the chimes and stuff like that. Do you, uh, do you carry crystals with you? Like when you're doing, uh, when you're going on hunts and when you're going, when you're out and about. If I'm going on a ghost hunt, yes, I will bring a few things. Um, but just to go out, I don't, I don't usually carry anything with me. I feel I have a strong enough bubble around me that, um, it, it works for the most so, part. So what do you carry the crystals for? I mean, are they for protection? Are they more for channeling energies or what? I will carry tourmaline because it's a protecting stone. Okay. Um, amethyst because it's a stone of love and usually some rose quartz because that's a stone for the heart. Okay. Can you and, throw these stones at ghosts? 
No, I carry them in my pocket. Oh, <laughs> you can throw them, but I don't think it would Well, no, I mean, you know, carry a wrist rocket with little tiny little stones that you get. I mean, I don't know. But some people want to know is there a way you can fight with these things, but I don't know. No, I, I, I carry my holy water and I splash that in the <laughs> <laughs> So I, I sorry, I got, I gotta, I gotta have fun with it. I just, hey, that's fine. That's okay. I don't mind. No, no, I know a lot of people it. do that, and and I know people uh, carry medicine bags with them and and stuff they like do. that, so, so for protection. So if I know where I'm going, it's going to be like we've gone to Ashmore Estates before, uh -huh. and that place is very haunted, and I carried some stones there. And it was very interesting. It really was. I know that's in a far off land of uh, some other country, but that's one of the places <laughs> I, I need to go to. One well, Beans, I'm already in that particular country. I didn't need a visa like this. <laughs> I, I, I ordered the visa. It hasn't been delivered yet. So when it gets here, I'm just going to refuse it. Yeah. But, you know, Kim said I should probably have some type of travel documents with me. <laughs> you you, you folks show, are yeah. a little bit a little more um, protective of your land. <laughs> Ashmore Estates, I will say it is on my bucket list. I've it's on my list. It's on my list. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, it's um, yeah, it's a very very interesting place. It really is. Yeah. Ooh. And if you're going to go to Ashmore Estates, you ought to try to go by the Haunted Art Theater in Auburn. The who? Haunted oh. Art Theater. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's an old movie theater that as a child I used to go to and watch movies and my partner used to operate the films there but we've had several ghost hunts there the Kling brothers have been there we've gone with them um, we've done some fundraising for St. Jude and we had some characters from The Walking Dead the original Walking Dead so we've done a lot of things we had an interesting event take place. Mm. We were, there was a group of us and we were all metaphysical and, and we were in, it's called the green room. It's where the owner has his, his records and CDs and stuff. And, and everybody kept saying, John Wayne was here, John Wayne. And we all kept thinking it was the cowboy. Well, we were wrong. It was John Wayne Gacy. His okay. spirit had come in. And that night, we had a massive crossover. And we were able to connect him with the big guy. And the two of them walked off. And he had served his time here on Earth. And it was time for him to move on and do some good in other places change his ways yep that was That's that fun. was and everybody that was there that night had some kind of connection directly with john wayne gacy the owners had bought a curio cabinet from the home that the attorneys who representative had and that had his clown portraits in it. My partner had dealt with the uh, medical side of his issues, and he had seen the original paperwork for that. A couple other people had other connections. Uh, Robin Terry, who owns it, his wife, when she was going to college, her roommate had a brother who was a victim of John Wayne Gacy. So everybody there yes. had some kind of direct connection. And it just was just happenstance that we all happened to meet there and it all take place. But it has really left all of us. It was a really heavy night. It really was. It was very interesting. The art theater is an amazing place. Uh, Robin no longer... Uh, allows investigations there, Robin and Norma. So uh, I, because I was just out there two weeks ago, you know, back in the back for a paranormal potluck. Uh, they've had for the past ten years. They had uh, conferences there, um, and 
last one was a year ago. Now they're having the potlucks, but I asked Robin and he said, nope, it's, it's now been shut down for about a year. Well, so, it's, it's so now we got to go to Ashmore. It's their home. Yeah. It's, that's it's where they live. Home. And yeah. the way it's all situated, you had to go kind of through their home to get to part of the areas that were so haunted. And it was a, yeah, none of them are spring chickens. So I <laughs> need Neither are we. I was going to say none of us are. <laughs> no, <laughs> by no means. But but the Ashmore Estates, yes, that is oh, an absolutely. amazing place. I have... said, uh, Kate said I need to check the place out. It says really, really cool. You all say it is really, really cool. And uh, it's only nine hours. I mean, pff, nine hours. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> Bill and I were there with um, Tennessee Wraith Chasers. And it was very interesting. We had a good investigation. It was very good. Cool. Now, I've had a couple, couple, in fact, in just the last 20 minutes or so, shadows are moving in. And they're in the kitchen. And I can see a half a dozen specific shadows. I don't know who any of them are, but there is kind of a portal through the living room and through the dining room. And where I sit at night, I can just see them because they block the light out periodically. And they're all standing there now and the light is blocked out. They find this quite interesting, I think. But I had a visitation. Ken, do you remember me telling you about that gray that I saw at Meyer one night? It was just before Christmas, just before COVID. I was gonna cook a big Christmas meal. So I decided I'd go to Meyer and do some shopping. And I got out there and it was like 10, 10.30. Place was almost empty, which was really nice. But I did my shopping and I got up and there was one checkout open. So I got in line, but it was weird. The cashier was just kind of fixated on the register. There was a gentleman at the register, a girl in front of me, and then me. And the girl in front of me, she was fixated reading, a, and, and she couldn't have been seeing anything. She just stared at this box she was looking at. But the guy was about almost seven foot tall, yes. skinny, very, very much out of character, very skinny, had like a fatigue type jacket on, had a hat, but his hair was down covering his face had some food stuff with him, but he had something that was totally out of character. It was about the time the movie Frozen came out and he had a poster of Frozen that he was checking out with. And I'm kind of watching this. Nobody else is able to have a clue what's going on. They're just like in their own fog, but I'm watching. As he paid, he turned around and looked. He nodded. He got halfway out the store and turned around and looked again. This guy turns out to be a gray. And about a month and a half, two months ago, I had fallen asleep in the room back here. And I heard a noise and I woke up. And he was standing at the back door at the door that goes out to the garage. Hmm. Okay. It startled me. I actually hollered. It, it startled me. But he had two other people with him or two other creatures with him. And once I hollered, they were gone. And when you say gray, there, this is something that's coming up in the chat. Do you mean gray as in gray alien? Yes. Gray? Okay. Just yes. So then he had a poster. With, did he have food?
Recording in progress. Sorry, technical difficulties. It's not produced by me unless there's technical difficulties. I'm getting everybody back in. I do apologize. It was running off of a different Zoom. I'm doing another job, guys. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Everybody should be coming in, though. Ah, there they are. Freaking aliens. <laughs> Freaking aliens. Right? I, I know. It started to get interesting. And, and then, uh, only not that it wasn't interesting already, but it's like, okay, okay, we're talking about this. It's interesting. I wanted, I wanted to find out what kind of snack food the alien was getting. And I <laughs> want to know specifically if it was Little Debbie or Hostess. I mean, Adrian, that was called a cliffhanger, guys. That was a cliffhanger. <laughs> it's a cliffhanger. It, was a, it, was, it wasn't a cliffhanger. It was a fall off the cliff. It was like a happened. plumbing over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear. Yeah, I'm sorry. Gosh, oh, I you're hate. Fine. You're it's, fine. We've never had that problem before. We've had everything else. I wonder. Been, like, like, I wonder if we're having solar well, solar flares again. What happened was I had <laughs> you guys in the wrong Zoom. Yeah, we just we zoom in our way, and then it says, "Oh, your free trial has ended." <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Now, Thomas, if you can hear us, um, if you could click on your mic and your camera, and you may have to go to the bottom of your screen to find those. I see it. You see yours? Oh, Yay. My, well, no, I don't see him. Is it? I see, Michelle, welcome. It, 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 Thank name. you. Yeah, What's my my lead had mercy on me. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> she was like, "Well, I'll let you go ahead and go and take care of that since you got problems." I'm like, "Oh my god, thank you." Did they know they what got problems? Do they know what you're up to? Oh yeah, she knows what I was up to. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Well, you it, get to meet Tom now. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe. Tom. Maybe. And the lower oh, oh, oh. left part of your Zoom should be a mic and a video. There he yeah, is. There he is. There you are. Oh, uh, now I'm back. Okay. Yay! I am so Yay. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. It's my fault. <laughs> All right. Great having you on. Bye. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been great. You know, you. Oh, now, wait a minute. Just, be careful. You just said gray again. So gray. Yeah. <laughs> like, that seems be to be the magic word. Yeah, well, just... I mean, the biggest question that I have about grays are, is it with an A or with an E? <laughs> G-R-A-Y? Uh, G-R-E-Y? I think it's A-Y. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is tonight anyway. I want to I <laughs> ask them because they would know. But, yeah. But what the, I, the, there was more to that story. The night before, at 3 o'clock in the morning, our alarm system went off. Now, we've had this alarm for probably hmm, 10 years. Never has the alarm ever gone off. Smoke alarm, yeah, <laughs> that's frequent. But the actual alarm never has. 
at three o'clock one morning, it went off. And it's just blaring. And then the phone starts blaring at us. It's the alarm company calling and saying there's someone downstairs. They've come through the garage door. Well, we came down and checked and everything was closed up. The next night is when the two or the three grays appeared here. So I suspect when they came through the garage, they triggered the alarm somehow. But the next night, they didn't come that way because the alarm didn't go off. And I must tell you, at 3 o'clock in the morning, when your, your, your security alarm goes off, ooh. <laughs> you take notice, huh? It, it gets your heart a-pumping. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty dangerous for any, anybody on any planet that for that to happen at my house. <laughs> It would be. It would, I don't know how well they. How how well does a gray hand, you know, stand up to a shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They could have that invisible cloaking device. Uh, uh, I suspect they would probably be able to take care of themselves. Uh, uh, <laughs> they are more advanced than we like, are. <laughs> I, I, I really think they like are. This. Yes. <laughs> It become rubbery like that you're yeah, done you're, yeah i get really aggravated when things wake me up at three o'clock in the morning yeah. uh, good point hey tom hey, oh go ahead no what were you going to say ken i was going to say um if i remember correctly haven't you've had several experiences with um aliens and ufos haven't you over the years yes they've come to visit me they do and one night i was laying in bed and something woke me up and i was facing well, out towards the hallway. And I kind of took a, you know, moved back a little bit because there were three little creatures standing there at the bed. They had the, the big eyes. They were short. And one of them looked at the other one, and I could hear him say, he sees us. And I did. I sure enough saw him standing there. And they looked back at me, and they were able to convey to me that they would see me again. Well, it was a few months later. I was downstairs watching TV, and Bill was up in bed. And he said something woke him up, and the three of them were at the foot of the bed. And he goes, Tom's downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't deal with well that. that. <laughs> But yeah, they've they've come in several times, and and yeah, it. I do see them. Now we have a Sasquatch that comes around, and he's pretty special. His name is Gunther, and he's one of the more older, um, more of a grandfather figure as far as Sasquatch goes. And one night I was out walking my little girl and we usually take a walk about two, two 30 before we go up and go to bed. And in our neighborhood, it was very quiet. There was not a light on anywhere, few street lights, no noise, not even road noise. And all of a sudden I got hit in the back by little rocks. And I thought, and I could hear them hit the road and the sidewalk. And I thought, what? There's nobody out here. And I turned around and looked and looked. Couldn't see a soul anywhere. And I thought, well, okay, I guess I'm imagining things. So we kept on walking almost back to the house. And it happened again. And I turned around and couldn't see them. Well, a good friend of mine who is very much into this, this stuff said, Tom Gunther brought by the young ones to see who you are. They all knew about you, but they had never seen you and they wanted to see you. So periodically at night where I sit, at the patio door is right next to me. The, the security light doesn't go on, but they'll be banging Happy at the open. door. Mm -hmm. And I'll look over and I won't see anything, but then they'll be scratching again at the door. Now we've had raccoons up here and they don't scratch at the door. Yeah. These were the little creatures coming up just to to say hey and to and 
the last couple of weeks, I think it's all because of all the planetary movement and the things that are taking place in the in the heavens. He's been coming up between the two houses. We can I'll hear f- footsteps through the grass at night. And it'll come just to where the light starts and the dark starts. He won't come into the light, but he stops right there. And I can feel him. I just, it, it's just an amazing energy flow that, that you feel. But it's, it's live in a pretty interesting place, I must say. It is a very active place. And that woods behind you is ex- extra special. They are. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's a, a small creek that runs back through there, and it's called Lick Creek. Mm-hmm. And Lewis and Clark followed Lick Creek through this part of the country on their way out west. And the Mormons, the Mormons followed this on the way to Utah. And every once in a while, we'll do... I'll do some recordings to to get the EVPs and stuff. And we'll hear the wagons going through there. During the War of 1812, the soldiers marched through here. And you can hear the drum beats going on and the cadence on the recordings that we're getting. It's really cool. That's fascinating. That is pretty fascinating. That's pretty cool. And the Native Americans also. I'm sorry, Ken. And the Native Americans back there also. Oh, absolutely. That, that whole area. The, the, um, that famous trail runs right by our property. Yeah, um, the, it's a Carl, name about this long. Yeah, Carl told us that name a while ago. But if you go, yeah. if you're, go down to Meyer, which is on the south end of town, Late at night, you can feel the Indians passing through there. It was a famous trail that all the tribes followed as they were being pushed onto different reservations. Is that the Edwards Trace? No, it starts with a P, I think. Oh, okay. Is that a really long word? Really long one. Okay. Um, but it was, every once in a while, you can feel them. And there's no doubt at night you can almost sense them going through there. Yeah, it's a it's a fascinating place. I've been to Tom's many times over the year. Oh, is this the Potawatomi? Yes. Potawatomi. There you go. Yeah. Potawatomi. Yeah, it's part of the Sangamon Trail. Mm-hmm. And part of Sangamon County, which are you guys in Sangamon County? Yes, we are. That's yeah, right, uh, right there on Springfield area. Right by the, mm-hmm. well, you got the big Springfield Lake there too. Now, was that man-made? Yes, okay. it was a man-made lake. I didn't know if it, it had been there at that actually point. when they built the old state capitol. That's where the limestone came from for the original building, which is what it is now. Again. Oh wow! But okay. it, that's how they made the lake, and now the oh, it's used for part of the power plant and stuff, but. We were out at Sangamon State and with Ken one afternoon, and we went into the woods there, and it's very active. A lot of Sasquatch and, and such back there. And it was very, very active when we were back there. And this was in the day that it was right at sunset. Yeah. And a lot Enzo of in the chat, he That's said. That's what you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Enzo said, Tom, do you think all these different facets of the paranormal are related in some way? Or they are they attracted to you? I think they are related. Maybe cousins and along that type of thing. I came about my abilities kind of by an accident. In January of 2011, I caught a bad cold. And the cold settled in my heart. And I ended up with cardiomyopathy. And it took until September before it was finally diagnosed. But by that time, I was very sick. And I ended up with a pacemaker defibrillator. So they put it in. And about a month after they put it in, I was called in for an emergency adjustment. So they did their emergency adjustment. The next morning, it started, the defibrillator started firing. It fired seven full charges in less than a minute. It stopped my heart altogether 
for about three and a half, four minutes. And then as the body was releasing the oxygen, it generated another full charge. And this is how we talk today. I, I'm, this is how I'm still around. That was the beginning. And since then, it's fired several more times. And it's not just a single firing, it's numerous times. But after that initial one where it stopped my heart, I had massive PTSD. It would be like that and I'd be just bawling my eyes out. Oh, yeah. Well, the next time it fired, it fired three full charges, but it saved my life that time. And it kind of took care of the what was going on up here. It showed me that it was doing good. But um, yeah, it, that was quite an experience. And every time it fires, I just get a little bit more intense. Yeah. It, it so it it's it was medically induced. Medica. <laughs> That's it. I guess. And and the doctor who ordered the adjustment. It was, it was shocking. Would you say? <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> We got to um, wrap this up because we hit our hour, but uh, we got other questions. We got to make this quick. So I want to give you some more time because we had issues, but, uh, but let's keep the next, uh, next little group, little closer in. That's cool. But you no, know, I've had some amazing experiences and stuff. So it just, yeah, the, the paranormal, I fully believe in, um, evil spirits, I'm not saying they're not out there because they probably are, but I've never had a run in with them. So I, I'm very pleased with that. All of us are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So Tom, how can people, how can people get a hold of you if they have more questions or, I want uh, or, or if they want to, if they want to buy a chime? Yes. Yeah. Or um, order a chime. Facebook messenger got the best because I check it all the time um, and yes just get in touch with me if, if they're looking for something or if they have a question or or if they just want to chit chat I'm easy I'm retired I don't have a wife I'm in my second childhood having fun. <laughs> yay so, I, don't, I don't have a life I don't have a life <laughs> um, I work friend. hard to get here so uh, by gosh well, I'm going to enjoy it <laughs> you should we have to have you back we're going to be begging Ken to bring you back yeah Oh yeah, we gotta. Yeah, because I gotta a, be here on a, on, a not so, on a not so amok night. Yes. <laughs> yeah, tonight was really, really weird. I am it's, so uh, sorry. It, 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 oh, all right. no, 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 it, it, I'm blaming it, it on the sun. It, well, I, <laughs> there is a lot of Mars is going into this retrograde. Then there's Mercury doing things, and it just it's crazy right now. Solar flares have been active. Oh, that makes sense. And, and we just moved <laughs> it, into it really my does. season, just, Pisces season. It, it and we are now entering the age of Aquarius. Yes, we are. We have the Illinois group saying, "Yes, have Thomas back." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no way we can have a uh, a uh, a show that's all in, in one, right? Well, yeah, you know, hey, but those. <laughs> Interruptions gave you a chance to, yeah. Reset the chair, you know. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't enough for an interruption to get me to get uh, give me enough time to go to the restroom. No, oh no! no. Drag. I'm sorry. I have a pot right I, here, so it's okay. <laughs> I, kept, I kept calling them cliffhangers. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I'm so sorry, but I don't. Oh, wait, it's tomorrow. Wait or next no. week. Next week, no, I don't. I don't have anybody next week, and I'm going yeah. to be working, so I'm probably going to beg Pam or somebody to take my spot. So one of, one of us are going to step in. We'll wear a we'll wear a colored wig, and we'll <laughs> be Donna. Okay. <laughs> I do no. apologize. No. I didn't realize we'll this get... was going to be two weeks worth of of no boot problem. camp at night. <laughs> so I have no I have no idea who will be next week because uh, now we're going to reel in, but it's going to happen. It's going to we're going to figure this out because I know people all over the place. We we'll get somebody on next week. Uh, I know, 100%. and then and then we have Kinsa. What what do you got? Kinsa. Kinsa. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but I do have I do have a guest lined up. I'm just yeah. don't have it right in front of me. I think it's um, Kansas Travel Adventures. I think. Yeah. 
is who is the next one. I have the next two lined up. So, and then yeah. after that, we'll have Jason Mansfield. Oh no, it's a no, it's a Kansas Paranormal Group. Sorry. All right, no problem. And like I said, my guy, I have got coming weeks. on it. Jason Mansfield, he's a pretty interesting dude. You know, quite the character. So it'll be fun. We'll talk about tacos, I'm sure. Uh-huh. And I love food. Uh, so, well, I mean, if you know him. Margaritas, you know. too. I do yeah. have a guest for March, though. Yeah. But... Oh, great. <laughs> That's okay. We'll have a guest next week. If not, Enzo if not... was nice enough to put Tom's Facebook um, um, link in our chat, too, for anybody that is interested. Yes. All right. Absolutely. Y'all. Thanks, Enzo. All right, and, guys. And Terry, well, good to, oh, I'm go ahead. You chimed in too, Terry. So good to hear from you too. <laughs> Again, sorry for a muck, but that's Bye. who we are. Muck. Bye, y'all. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.